is it that really makes a global leader? So that's what our research is all about, and that's what I'm going to share with you. I will tell you the book is only out um, about a month, so you're one of the early um, people getting an uh, insight and snapshot, though Greg knew it was coming for a while, which is why he invited me <laughs> to, to come. So global leadership, why is it so critically important? By the way, Mark Hutchinson, this person on this, his mentor was Jim McNerney. Um, it's so critically important. The truth is that anybody who leads and is a leader in the global arena today knows how hard it is to find talent in the world who have great leadership capability and who are able to do business effectively anywhere in the world. It's absolutely essential. Do you know that Davos, are you guys uh, folks familiar with Davos? It is a yearly group in Switzerland of all the major CEOs that get together. PricewaterhouseCoopers does a study with all those CEOs to come up with what is the big emerging issue on their mind in terms of growing their business. Top issue, which is why it's so great you're all in leadership development programs here and Boeing invests so much in it. The top issue is will we have the necessary talent to compete in a global arena from a leadership level? And it's the key thing on most CEOs' minds, regardless of whether they're Western or they're from other parts of the world. So that's the book. So why is it so important? And let's talk about a couple of faux pas. Now, this happens to be, these happen to be U.S.-based companies, but I could give you a list of uh, non-U.S. companies that have uh, committed as many faux pas. Twitter, widely publicized right now, big into doing censorship and uh, you know, competing in certain governments where there is some censorship going on, and Twitter confronting that. And you know what did the countries do? They shut it down. They just completely shut it down. Now, your values may say that's wrong. Doesn't matter. It's a different environment where you're trying to do business. Uh, Google, huge leadership issues. Book written on Google, about Google, uh, I'm sure they're not happy about it, but Google's right down the road from, from me, uh, as is Twitter, frankly. But arrogant leaders who believe that it's either their way or the highway. Now, I don't know if you know about this, but uh, because I'm from Silicon Valley, uh, Google tried to go into China, got into some conflict with the Chinese government, particularly about open communication, which happens to be a value of um, Google, and I am not making a commentary on their value, uh, but because they could not approach it in a way that was effective with the local government, again, the local government shut them down. And guess what? Have anybody heard about Badu, B-A-I-D-U? Well, the big Chinese competitor to Google. And you will see that, that right now it's in the news quite, quite consistently, that it is uh, really pushing up against Google and could push them right out of that market. And it's a market that has 1.3 trillion people. That is a lot of people to be pushed out of a market. Now let's look at McDonald's. You know, everybody knows McDonald's. Um, I always say most Americans wouldn't go into McDonald's, but many Americans do, but they're all over the world. And let's talk about France. France at one point had a huge rebellion against McDonald's because it was so countercultural to the way they present food. Now, McDonald's happens to be one of the best global companies in the world. They've learned their lesson, and now they adapt McDonald's to A, the local environment, and they adapt McDonald's to the local food uh, requirements without adjusting their supply chain because we all know that all companies, including yours, the way you do your supply chain is how you drive efficiencies around the world. But good example, Disneyland almost went bankrupt in, in France again. Maybe that's something about the French people, I don't know. But almost went bankrupt, bankrupt in Paris again. They had to almost shut down that Disneyland outside of Paris um, because we had imposed you know, our own value set on the French. 
We didn't want selling wine and people walking down the streets being able to drink, you know, wine in the amusement park. We didn't want to put some other things into the amusement park because of our own view of the world. And you know what the French said? Fine, you can have your view of the world. We're not going to come to your park, right? Now, Disney World is touted as being one of the get best global companies in the world. They're opening a park in uh, Shanghai. And what they did was learn brutally from this lesson, these lessons. And now they have taken a fair amount of time, not a fair amount of time, but they have adapted Disney, the Disney characters, the feel of the park to the whole Chinese culture. And it is amazingly and wildly uh, on the top of the charts. So in today's world, what is really critical is that these kinds of faux pas could be overlooked 20 years ago. And they were overlooked 20 years ago because companies were multinational. They weren't global. They were dabbling in certain parts of the world. Communication wasn't at all what it is today. And people could make mistakes, and it wasn't as visible and known as, and seen. Today, you make a mistake, and it's out there within minutes. I mean, that episode with Google was around the world within nanoseconds, and that's the way it is. You try and take a leader from one country today, and you put them in another country, and that leader has a bad reputation, do you know how fast the second the word is out that that leader is coming? It is all over the world. Now, do you think that person has a chance of surviving when that happens? No. They really don't. Where before we sat back and we sort of tolerated poor leadership. Complexity, so it's unforgiving, it's fast. The complexity of doing business in a global world today is unbelievable from the socioeconomic perspective, from the cultural perspective, from the political perspective, from the process perspective, and the nuances that are out there. So it is a highly, highly complex environment. And it's, 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 it's easier to understand your own cues in your own system than it is when you're looking out across an entire landscape of different worlds and different thoughts. Very amb ambiguous, but also very, very interconnected. And you know, we all know about the Arab Spring. There are many that say because of that interconnectedness. Actually, somebody did a map around the Twitter communications uh, around uh, in, in Egypt and showed the viral nature and the time span that those communications happen that caused that uh, uprising. And that wouldn't have happened 20 years ago. We didn't have the capability to do that 20 years ago. So totally interconnected. Um, the global arena the lack of leadership capability shows up like that. And I've talked about some of these, but companies are becoming global overnight. Let's take Metropolitan Life Insurance, US-based company, AIG. They bought an arm of AIG, you know, the failed financial company that we had to bail out. You probably remember a lot about that in the press, but that was a year ago. Americans forget, you know, we, we've forgotten all that. But we had to bail them out. AIG, huh? Boeing recovery. <laughs> They're one of the big backers of our leasing. Oh, <laughs> okay. Boeing remembers good. And so we, we had to, uh, you know, they got bought by Metropolitan Life. All of a sudden, Metropolitan Life wakes up and boom, they're a global company. People want to go into China and they want to ex expand into the Chinese markets. One of the prevailing ways that you expand into the Chinese market is by doing a joint venture. When you do a joint venture, you're buying a company that, or you're engaging with the company that was previously a government-owned company that has a whole different perspective on how they manage and lead people. And you've got to figure out how you work with these folks in order to get synergy out of this joint venture. And the customer supply chains are totally global. I don't know if you know this, but HP does not make a computer. They make no printers. They make no computers. They make servers in certain parts of the world. The supply chain is totally in Asia, totally in Asia. If we can't figure out how to work with that supply chain, 
we're going to have all sorts of quality problems and issues. So it's absolutely critical. I talked about this, too many leadership competency models. And I was actually at INSEAD, do you know uh, INSEAD? INSEAD is like the Harvard of uh, Europe. And there were several HR leaders speaking there saying, you know, give me one framework for what I need to do to develop global leaders. And so that's what we set out to do. And I'm going to share that with you.